No, your eyes do not deceive you. Man, this guy kind of scratched up. Deceive you. I brought out this giant white whale for this one. Uh, man, listen to that puppy purr. Is that normal? I don't remember it being this loud. <laughs> anyway, I haven't used this thing in like, honestly over a year at this point, but I was kind of messing around with Bitwig and Live and trying out all these different new workflows. And I was like, you know what? Instead of jumping too far into the future, let me reel it back. Let me pump the brakes, take it back to a simpler time when things took forever to load and when dinosaurs roamed the earth. So I'm gonna be using the MPC 4000 today. A little nervous. Hopefully I still know how to use this thing. But I will be taking a sample from today's video sponsor, TrackLib. In case you're not familiar, TrackLib is super duper dope. Shout out to them. I found this dope track under the Stolen Drums. If you're not familiar with Stolen Drums, incredible, incredible producer. He basically picked a bunch of favorites. I ended up finding this track in his collection, Ain't No Life After Love by Kisa Brown, I'm guessing. Hopefully it's Keisha. Let's see. Oh, I'm going to put this into Yeah, but what I really love is this part right here. Right, I love this tempo. 77 BPM. Ooh. I could do something with that. I love the slow elements that I can chop up and speed up into a house track. Yeah, I do house. It's kind of my thing. I love it. I love doing sampled house. But what's cool about TrackLib is if I were to go into all tracks here, you can kind of browse by genre. You can change what year you want so you can get really specific, anything from 1928 and up. And the way TrackLib works is basically a ton of the tracks have different license categories. For example, these three here are all license C. Um, it's really hard, honestly, to find license B and A, and that's kind of a good thing because the way TrackLib works is if I go to licensing, basically those tracks have different categories. You got 50 bucks, 500, 1500. Category C, my favorite, it's the cheapest. Um, you basically pay 50 bucks when you're ready to release the song, and depending on how many seconds of the sample you have used, you split royalties with the original artist. So you're kind of doing a collab with the original artist. It's a great way to give back to the original artist and take inspiration from the past, which is what I love to do, but do it in a way that kind of gives back to the original artist. I think that that's so cool. So shout out to TrackLib for kind of bridging that gap and bringing the best of both worlds together without having to worry about the FBI repelling through your window when you put a song up on Spotify. And it's super affordable, six bucks a month. Um, I got a free trial and some free credits down in the description below, which is like 15 credits, three months worth of credits, which is awesome. So please use that link down below in case you're curious. And again, shout out to TrackLib for uh, sponsoring this video and let me do what I love to do, which is make some sampled house music. So let's get back to that stolen drums track right here. I'm gonna go ahead and download this. And actually what I just did is I turned on looper, set it to four bars, and I'm just gonna download this little four bar loop. That way I don't have to sample the entire track into the 4K and then chop it down. It's a little slow, you'll see in a sec, but it's actually not that bad. Cool, so I got this here. Show in Finder, ba-boom. Let me close this real quick. And on the 4K, I'm gonna hit record. Let's set my time to 20 seconds, record. Yes, please. Awesome. So I hope this works the way I am thinking it does. Let's see. All right, uh, what's this sample called? Uh, let's just call it after love. I'll go ahead and put this in screensaver mode. So A, F, T, I know this is exactly what you came here to see. How do I name things on here, right? After L, O, V, E, so exciting. I know how to spell. I'm gonna add this to a program, call this new program. I'm gonna just call this one love. So boom, boom. What sucks is I'm not even gonna end up using this program. So boom, do it. I'm gonna assign it. It's gonna be drums, I'm gonna assign it here. Um, cool, so if I go to, let's just let this live on track seven. Part seven is gonna listen to love. Okay, cool, so program, KG Mix, I have this here. Now I just want to, this isn't a tutorial by the way, 
if I stopped and said everything that I was doing on the 4K, it would take way too long. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of run through this. Like I mentioned earlier, I kind of use that four bar loop mode, but what I need to do is clear the end because this doesn't just import the sample. I actually recorded it in through the analog out. So I need to zoom out and get it right here at this little ending point as best as I can. I can go basically by samples at this point. Cool, edit, discard that. And now we have the exact four bar loop that I want. I'm gonna go ahead and overwrite this. Now, this is the fun part. I'm gonna go into regions and see how many slices I want. This is my fast way of slicing on the MPC 4000, but you could do this on basically any sampler. I've done it in this video here on the Octatrack. I, honestly, I've added a couple of videos in there where I probably have done this. Um, so click on that little eye in that corner and you'll see some more stuff in there of how I've used this way to chop samples on other devices. All right, regions, let me see how many snares there are and that'll tell me how many slices I need. So I know that there's another eight after this, so I need 32 slices. The math there is basically four rows times eight is 32. So I'm gonna go to regions here, window trim 32, enter and do it. Please, let me go uh, full. Awesome. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Because sometimes with old samples, the snares and the kicks are a little off because they're kind of, you know, not playing to a metronome or anything like that, which kind of, it could be cool sometimes, but if you lay down some drums and then try to do this, you're done for. So I'm going to go back to track one. Let me just lay down a kick drum here. It sounds terrible. Just give me one second. Cool, so what we're hearing now is basically the way that the MPC defaults in, which if I go to this here, it's a as sample mode, which basically means, oh, I didn't even highlight it, it's this right here. So as sample means as soon as I let go, it's kind of like gated mode, but I want to set it to one shot mode. There we go, so now the whole sample plays, it's just a solid kick. But I like having as sample mode or gated mode on my kicks because, or on my snares, no, 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 on my hi-hats. Breathe, Enrique, breathe. Okay. So here I'm gonna go into uh, Sure, that'll be fine. And let me just set this to two bars actually to speed this up. Two bars, cool. Awesome, and now I'm gonna go ahead and add a clap. Sure, that'll work. Now that I have this, I can go back to our bars and just copy this from first bar to last bar, after bar two, how many copies? One, which equals four. Yay for math. I loved math in high school. It's one of my favorite Maybe that's why I love the MPC so much. It's the math production center. I've cracked the code. Okay, onto the sample. This was on track seven here. Let me rename this so I don't get confused. I'll call this uh, love. And you can get very confused with the naming conventions on here because everything has a name, but everything can be a part of something else and name something different, but be pulling information from somewhere else. So for example, we have this here, uh, right? I need to chop this up, which I did, but I didn't save this as a new program. So what I'm going to do is now take these 32 regions and if I hit edit, I can generate a sequence or generate a new program. And that's what I want to do. So I'm generating the new program. It's gonna be called something probably random. And now I'm gonna set part seven to that new program, which is uh, sample, right? And the reason it called itself sample, I 
No, 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 no. Oh, after love. So it names itself after the sample that you put in there and it has it chopped up. But same thing, it's in gated mode, right? Again, this could be a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you wanna play this in. Sometimes when it's really confusing for me to play this in because there's so many other rhythms on top of the drums that I already entered, I'll leave it into this mode. But in this case, this one's pretty easy. So I'm gonna to go to zone and I'm going to set it to all. So this means I'm editing all samples at the same time within a program because when I set the regions and I chopped it up, it gave me 32 new samples. So now I can just hit one, set this to one shot. I'm gonna go to pitch, set our poly polyphony to one and our mute group to one. So everything mutes each other and nothing can play twice. What's cool here is I can also change the pitch of everything. So let's say I wanted to go minus two. Okay, is that, is that, I think I just found the chop. Okay, I'm getting a little too far ahead of myself here. Actually, you hear that? I think this, uh, sample, if I go and listen to it here, go to our trim, that is a big no-no. That's a huge gap of air. So like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna have to fix this. So um, give me a sec and I'll fix this in three, two, one. <laughs> Nothing happened, all right, one second. All right, I just fixed them all. There's a couple different ways to do this. I like to, I prefer to go and fix the regions because it um, kind of changes the end point of the previous slice and leaves less gaps in the audio, but you can also go back and edit individual slices after you've done this. Basically, I've done this now, I'm gonna create a new program, and it's basically gonna call this one After Love, probably 33, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see, uh, After Love 3. So it's just because I've had a couple of these. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I kind of like that idea. Let me go ahead and play this in. And I'm gonna play it in gated mode, but I'm gonna switch it to the sampled mode just in a second. Cool, so now that that's done, I can go again into our same section. Zone, one shot, polyphony to one, mute group. Change our pitch down a little for all of them. Same thing, I can go to our filter. Yo. That's just it right there, just let it chill at that. Find an open hat. Let's go with the classic cheesy. I'll say uh, velocity. Little loud, track four. Okay, so we kind of got this idea here. I'm gonna go to our next sequence and copy this. The, um, I got 32 slices on this sample, so I gotta find other variations. This one's cool just because I kind of stumbled across it, but I'm gonna go ahead and erase it. And let's turn our, um, our filter up, All right? So I'm gonna set it to 100, so now it's, uh, That's kind of cool. Let's see. I'm gonna set it 
set up my Q link here. What part are we on? We're on part seven, right? So part seven, what they're gonna be assigned to, the cutoff, and it's gonna offset whatever value I already set. It's already at max, so I'm gonna say up to zero, which is where it's at, down minus 100. And minus 100 is actually too much. So I like to do a minus, uh, not minus 220, minus 20. Still a little much. Oh, right, minus 80, my bad. Right, not bad. And then if I go to next sequence here, let's see what the other sequence sounds like. So this one's kind of cool if there was no kick. Right, so I can just say erase the kick. Not bad. Or the other option, which doesn't hurt, say you like a song so much, you could just take the whole section and just repitch it. Again, this was slow, this is a slower song at like. Um, I think it was 77 BPM, but the way you chop it, I took four bars and I set it to 32 slices. So I have 16 here, and then I have the other 16 here. But in case you didn't notice, my kicks, always here, and my snares, always there. So it's one and two and three and four and one and two. So if you really want it, you can say. And then. I ain't no Jay Black, but, or a rap music, but you get the idea, right? Okay, so like I said a second ago, we can just take the entire thing. Here we are at our sample, and I'm just gonna go and it's four bars. I know the sample's four bars. Let's go ahead and play it in. And I'm going to jump between banks. Right, there it is. Or you can go kind of house style with it, which is, say this was eight bars. Um, let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go ahead and copy. From the first bar to the last bar after bar for one copy, which equals eight. Yay for math. All right, I am a loser. Let's do this. You can just double. One bar or two bars. Right, kind of add a little variation in there. And just let this ride out, right? So I can't change sequence unless I, and then we go. We'll go back to the breakdown basically without the kick. There it is. But see, this, this style of chopping was so much more fast and so much more intense than the other one. I don't know if it actually works. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. You tell me. Let's try this one again. Oh. Yeah, this one's really good. Because this one, you just vibe out, right? Let's see. If this isn't tuned weird, because I can also go to track eight, and I'm gonna set this to bass. I don't have a bass loaded, but from my old studio sample, studio since my old, old Juno. I sampled a square wave before I, before I sold it. Um, I'm gonna put that here, load to program. 16 levels, and we're gonna set this to uh, 16 different tuning. And I'm gonna set the original pitch to five.
That's kind of cool. Let's see. Sounds kind of whack right now, but if we go into the program, we got the zone already set up. I kind of like the way it is now. I'm gonna just change the uh, filter. And it's really loud. That's a really, really loud bass. And then we can also do like a little uh, pitchiness, right? So we can say, uh, basically the filter envelope to go to the filter cutoff which is here and we'll set this to zero set this to zero dude i i will never understand these uh these filter measurements it's r1 r2 r3 r4 i'm guessing four ramps and four levels but they are confusing Oh, wait a minute. I just figured it out. Ramp one to level one, and then ramp two to level two, and what's level two's value? Wow, these are gorgeous. What the hell kind of envelope is this? This is nuts. I get it now though. Right, because I can go like this minute. Still a little loud, this is track A. So I'm gonna try something different here. So I'm gonna go to next sequence, and I'll probably leave it at this because this is where you can kind of get really, really weird with things. Um, I'm gonna go to track one again, which is our kick, erase the kick. I'm gonna go to our sample and Where's the sample at? It's... Okay, so while this is playing, I'll just solo. Okay, I like that. Right, so check this out. This is gonna be crazy. Oh, that was the one right here. Okay, you don't hear it now, but you'll hear it on the other way because this is quantized. Oh, that little thunk. Yes, 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 yes. Prepare to get your minds informed. We're not gonna go aggressive and say blown. Um, we're gonna learn something here. Check this. When I have this set to zone, it's editing all the samples ever, right? Within this program which happens to be the After Love program, which is all these slices. My filter currently is set to 100, which is max. My Q-Link setup is set to go to plus zero, which is basically no further than max because it can't because it's already at 100, to minus 80. But if I set the filter cutoff to let's say 50, it's halfway down. I can't go any more than 50, right? Because our queuing setup is set to plus zero, which is no more than 50. It's offsetting from 50. I can then say um, 50. So now 50 plus 50 equals, you got it, maximum filter uh, frequencies. But check this out. This is just an offset. This is not a replacement of where the filter is. So if I go back into our program and change the zone from all to, to one, just editing single little samples here. And now I go back to our sample uh, filter page. I can select these two that were the additional little chops that I threw in there and change them to 70. So this, listen to this. They pop out, the little guitar plug. You heard it. I can make this even more drastic by setting this to 100 
and a hundred. You hear that now? But I like to keep it subtle, 80. And there, yes, there is some weird, let me, um, okay, that one's fine. It's this one that has that weird pop at the end. Let me chop that off really quick, edit, discard that. So there's no more of that weirdness in there. I'm gonna overwrite that sample so it puts it right back on there. Let's take this even further. This guitar, bunk, bunk. I am gonna say, send this to A, effects, and I'll set it to um, minus 10 decibels. Oh, hell no. Dude, I replaced the effects card on this not that long ago. Well, maybe it was like four years ago now. You're supposed to have four effects, but I only have two. Damn it, this happened before. Basically, that just means your effects card's busted, which is a pain in the ass to fix, because it's at the very bottom. Bad design, but where else are they gonna put it? Okay, so let's go to, um, let's go to stereo. So we're gonna do a stereo, uh, we'll go to edit. And I'm gonna set this to uh, 500 and I'll set this to 450. You hear that? Bonk, 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 bonk. Oh, it's that, um, here it is. Yeah, it's that snare. I don't like the snare. I'm just gonna, oh, this is where it gets tough because if I change this, it's gonna change up the other part. But you get the idea of what I'm trying to do with this thing. It actually ends up working out better without being sent anywhere. So I'm gonna just go ahead and set this back to minus 40 and turn this to multi. And back in it. Yes. Yo. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it here. Thank you, Tracklip. Again, check the link down below in case you're interested in that. If you wanna support the channel and buy some merch, by all means here, but you kicking it is more than enough. Ooh, that was. You hear it in there? That was dope. Anyway, I appreciate you, my friend, more than you know, and I hope to see you again next week. Thanks for kicking it as always. And until then, you know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. It's awesome.